Hello everyone. If um, Making a Murderer had been produced by filmmakers <laughs> Dean Strang and Jerry Buting, then I think, yes, Making a Murderer would quite possibly have been tilted in favour of the defence. I'm pretty sure that we would have had several episodes uh, to do with concerning Kratz's sexting career. They would have gone through, I'm sure, all of the Department of Justice reports and interviewed all the victims. Um, they, they could have spent several hours. I mean, I mean I've, I've spent many hours already looking at that career, and I'm sure that they could have done a lot more about Ken Kratz. They could have completely tilted it in favour of the defence. As it is, for me, I simply see it as a, as a documentary that presents all the facts as they happened, what was said, by whom. Um, you know, there's, there, there's, no, there, there's no question of it having been a, uh, you know, a, a tilted documentary, a one-sided documentary, as they would, as the guilties would, would try and tell us. Um, interesting that um, in an effort to try and sell um, his latest edition of his book, Ken Kratz has started doing YouTube videos. In one of them, he features the interview of Brendan Dassey that has been edited. But of course, what he conveniently forgets to tell you is that the video was obtained as a Freedom of Information Act request from the state. The state sent the edited video to the YouTuber. Ken Kratz, you, your friends basically edited your own video. You or your friends, for whatever purpose, we have no idea, but it not to do with us. But you know, regardless of, of who made Making a Murderer, when it comes to Brendan Dassey, there are two huge highlights that everybody will always remember. Uh, number one being the uh, the fact that Mark, Mark Regat gets so impatient with uh, trying to get a story out of Brendan Dassey, trying to get him to say anything other than just, just agreeing with the facts that they fed him. He's desperate to get him, him to say that they shot her in the head. And of course, he never comes out with it. But we have that classic line, I'm just going to come out and ask you, who shot her in the head? No, matter, no amount of editing will ever get rid of that fact. But as a result of that interview, we get something possibly even worse. I, I would suggest, yes, the sweaty press conference. And isn't it interesting that... Um, Kratz and Pargel, this isn't the first time that they've combined to do a press conference to try and discredit people. Um, I'll leave you the link to the uh, so-called Hilbert sex ring case, which they did a press conference about in 2002. Uh, I, th I don't think there's any date that um, Pargel and Kratz are just as bad as Kasurik and Vogel in 85. Um, and of course, here's the interesting thing, that in order to help to sort of um, get this media campaign against Stephen and Brendan, to, to really get it spread nationwide, who did they get in touch with? Nancy Grace. Or should that be Nancy Disgrace? Isn't it funny how, you know, two... <laughs> These two people, these two appalling individuals are kind of attracted to one another. I wonder if they ever had a, 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 if they ever met together. I wonder who was in control of that one. Um, of course, another thing is that Making a Murderer has been accused of discrediting Andy Colburn. I would say, quite simply, the thing that discredits Andy Colburn is the affidavit from Kevin Ramlow. Um, and remember, Kevin originally contacted Scott Taddick, who, just like 
those those good old investigators from the Department of Justice did did what any good investigator investigator would do, sat on it, tried to suppress it, even though there was information there, obviously that not just helps Steve, but also helps Brendan. Um, very curious that he sat on it. Um, as we know, um, in his effort to sell his book. Um, he even tried to sell it to me. I did a, a review of the, the book by looking at reviews from verified customers on Amazon. Um, one of the things that often gets, that, that you remember I said if you had one question you could ask Ken Kratz, do you know what the number one question was by a long way? And it was a very vague, how do you sleep at night? Well, let me assure you, in his book, page 122, third line down, there's a sentence. <laughs> but I lose no sleep over the prosecution of Brendan Dassey. Um, so I just want to take you back, as I say, back to this um, uh, Hilbert sex ring that uh, Pargan and Kratz did a press conference about in 2002. As I say, I'll leave you the, um, the link to a, um, a page from the newspaper. It's interesting there that one of the defendants in the case is found to have had um, child pornography on his computer, facing a 50 year sentence. Why is Bobby Dassey still walking free? But here's the bottom line, Ken. If a good, upstanding citizen of the community was supporting the convictions of Steve and Brendan, we would still support Kathleen Zellner and her efforts to try and find the truth. But we haven't got a fine, upstanding member of the community trying to defend the convictions of Steve and Brendan. What we have got is we've got a disgraced former district attorney, a despicable, unethical coward, the most appalling character ever to blight our TV screens. As we've discovered, Ken, it's, it's in your character, it's in your makeup, it's in your DNA, it's in your sweaty DNA. Bye for now.